Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a video touching up on the V90 at home that I made a year or two ago. And in this video I wanted to go into more detail about the hardware used. And in a following video I will go into more detail about the configurations used. What you see on your screen right now is my 6U rack unit. You can just ignore the Cisco Catalyst on the top. That's irrelevant to everything. In the middle is a Cisco 3845. Now, this is just what I ended up using. You can also use a Cisco 3825, which is what you saw in that video. But I ended up selling that to a friend to help them get on their path to V90 at home. So now I use the 3845, which is basically the same thing, but offers two more slots and is a lot louder. And then on the bottom, you see a Cisco 3640. This is an important part for the actual V90. So there's a lot of things on here that you won't need. A lot of these cards I got bundled in the units that I was buying going down this rabbit hole trying to figure out how to do this. So then I just cobbled together what I had to do this instead of buying more hardware. Let's start with the 3845. You don't need 12 FXS slots. You only need two. They make a card that only has two ports. You can get away with that unless you want more clients. Now keep in mind that the more lines you have, the more PVDMs you're going to need as these are the dedicated DSPs that handle voice calls. So let's just ignore these two right now. The analog modems are not relevant to the V90 part. If you want more information about why I have that, I can make another video, but spoiler, it's for web TV. So let's focus on this card. I want to highlight it in green here. This has a T1 controller and it also offers a slot for an FXS. So this could be your all-in-one card, but you don't really need this. You just need a T1 controller that can handle both data and voice. The Cisco 3845 is going to be the client, and down here, the 3640 is going to be the quote-unquote telephone company and ISP all in one. So the blue cable is a T1 crossover cable. You can buy them, or if you have an Ethernet crimping kit, you can Google how to turn a Cat5e into a T1 crossover. The blue cable plugs into the PRI 2C T1 CSU in the Cisco 3840 and the CSU is important because the CSU is the unit that can act as the telephone company. The other controllers can't run in network emulation mode but the CSU can. And the reason why the CSU is in the 3640 is because it's not compatible with the 3800 series. It's recognized, but it won't let you use it. So basically, the CSU emulates the telephone company, and then your client, which is the white cable right here, but again, it could be installed anywhere on the unit. When the client calls a number that is defined in the config, it routes the call over the T1 to the CSU, which then connects it to the modem bank. Now the modem bank has 30 modems available. Again, you also don't need all 30. So that card looks like this on the inside, and you'll see five cards on it. Each of these cards offers six modems, so you can get away with just one card. And for the CSU, you don't need two ports unless you want to do fancy stuff like split up your modem bank, which I haven't. But if you just want to access the modems, V90, say you got like one computer that you're trying to connect over V90, you only need one modem card, you only need one port on your CSU, you only need one T1 card that can handle voice and data, and you only need one FXS slot, but the minimum configuration is two. And because you have an FXS slot, you're going to need a PVDM, which looks like this for this model. And you'll also want some way to route internet to the 3640, 
You can see mine has an Ethernet card in it. It does not come with any cards. Bare bones, it does nothing on its own. Everything is modular in that router. So if you don't have an Ethernet card, you're not going to be able to pass Internet to your modem clients unless you do some trickery with the T1. I haven't tried it, but in theory, you could split up your T1 lines and have like six of them dedicated to calling the modem and then the rest of them dedicated to a data link. I have not tried it though, so I don't know if that would 100% work, but it might be a way to not have to spend as much money if you're building this from scratch. So that's the general overview of the hardware that I use. There are many different ways to do this and you don't specifically need my hardware or even Cisco's in general. This is just the way that I'm familiar with. The key important part, the key important parts for the dial up is the CSU, a router that can actually use the CSU and the Mika modem banks. So I hope this was somewhat informative and my next video I will go over some of the important configurations on the Cisco routers to make it all tie together and work. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know you're interested so that I can hopefully have the motivation to make the next part of this video before two years go by again. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.